Well, Mark, has it sunk in? Yeah, Claire, the match in your Ireland debut must have been too special on Saturday afternoon. Uh, yeah, it, it, it has sunk in now. Um, it was tough to tough to get my head around for sure. Uh, I called my parents um, about 20 minutes after the game and uh, they were asking me all these questions and I didn't even realise I pretty much wasn't talking back to them at all. I was just in absolute shock. But, um, you know, it's a different week now and it's a different beast in, in France. So I kind of had to switch my uh, mindset pretty quick. You said there you are speaking to your parents and you weren't sure what you were saying. What was the initiation song and what was it like to actually speak to your parents? Was it just were you so overwhelmed or just so much emotion? Yeah, heaps heaps of emotion. Like they they were um they were so happy for me as um as all parents would be, but then as I said I I kind of just my mind was all over the shop, mate. Um and then I was probably more focused on thinking of a good song to sing uh later on, so that was um, that was probably one of the most nerve wracking bits of the night, having having to get up and sing in front of everyone. Yeah, what, what song was it, and how did it all go? Did you strike a few chords? Did you? Uh, yep, nailed all, all of them for sure, um, as as was expected. Uh, I sang uh, "Sweet Caroline," so that's a bit of my go-to um, whenever I've got to get up and sing, whether it's at a pub or or for an, an initiation. Yeah, that's that's my go-to song. And just give us a sense of that moment in the changing room when you're with all 23, actually the wider squad. Is that sort of when it really sinks in? You know, you probably have your arms around different players saying how special the moment it was for you. Yeah, it was having having the players come up and congratulate me and, and then to be presented by my uh, with my cap from Faz was... Um, oh, it was just surreal. It was such a surreal moment. And they, I kind of got told um, before that to take your time and just... Um, I guess take notice of everything that's happening because you only really get one test debut. So uh, I definitely did that and soaked it all up in the in the change room. And then um, yeah, it was good to just be so, around such such good fellas as well. Like they, all of them were genuinely happy for me. Um, even the guys that weren't playing, like the the whole week, they they did their best to prepare me and get me ready. And same thing, they were just they were stoked when I um, I got named and they were uh, and was going to be making my debut. So it's it's that type of environment here at the moment where uh, it just makes it a whole lot special a whole lot yeah more special and I even noticed you couldn't help but smile when you heard your name on the big screen I think you even waved up to the crowd yeah uh, I um man I was just in shock like there were so many people had so many great performances on the field so um yeah as you said I, I couldn't help it it was just it was just such an amazing moment for for me and I think it was lucky enough that it was in a break so um, yeah, I did hear it over the, the big screen and I uh, just just gave them a little wave uh, for the people yelling out to me. So. And as far as the game went, it was very interesting. You got a good early touch, but also I find it interesting. It was your pass that set up Bundy in the corner and Bundy was the first guy that told you were in the squad without even you reading your emails. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I thought I've I've said it before. I thought Bunny was just taking the piss out of me when he was saying that. Um, he's a bit of a jokester himself, so I uh, didn't know whether to take him too seriously. But no, Bunny's been Bunny's been great this whole time. He actually set up some videos and everything from my family back home for me um, that I got before the game, and um, that was a very special and emotional time. Um, so I guess to to kind of give him that pass to to get him a try was yeah. A bittersweet, uh, not bittersweet. It was just, it was just great to, great that it happened, and um, yeah, it was just the the start I was looking for. And as the game went on, you came more into that second playmaker role. How much do you enjoy that role, Hamak? Yeah, it's good. I like I played ten pretty much my whole whole life growing up, um, so I'm definitely definitely love just getting my hands on the ball early and um, trying to create something there. Uh, in, as I said, but I've said before that. Um, I don't think I'm, I'll ever be a winger that just stands out in the wing um, waiting for the ball to come to him. I, I really enjoy going in there and, and looking for it. Yeah, and I'm right in saying you said you'd play 10 at school, but also there's a game, I've been a bit of research, I'm right, playing against West, first grade, your first game, and the original 10 went down injured and then you stepped up. Is that when it really kicked off? It was, yeah. It. Um, I, uh, I'd already played a full game of Colts and then was just supposed to 
so Colts is under 20s, and then yeah, I was supposed to um, come off the bench for first if something happened to happened to the 10, who was perfectly fine at the time. Like I more than likely wasn't going to get a game, and um, the poor bugger did his did his hammy like I think the first five minutes of warm up, um, and I was. Uh, I think I had a sprite in my hand, was just chilling on the sideline, not, not even really doing anything, and had to throw that down pretty quick and, and get ready to, to run out. It's pretty cool. And then coming into this team, Mark, did you expect to have so much freedom? You know, when you, Andy Farrell called you in and you got the start last week, did you expect to be roaming about, or did he tell you just, he obviously said, be yourself, that's why you want to play for Ireland, but did you expect to have this much freedom as a winger playing for Ireland? Yeah, I think that you look at the way that Ireland have been playing um, for the last little while, and it's such a great, expansive style of footy that I, that, that that we're producing at the moment. So, um, yeah, Andy gave me the free license to to I guess just play my game, and um, that was enough said. It was just I knew that then I, you know, I, I could have been my only shot to to show what I can do. So I may as well have just um, played how I like to play and. If it paid off, great, and if it didn't, you know, that's, I guess I could at least fall back on my sword knowing that I, I gave it everything I had. And did you get any special words this week from Dan McKellagher at the Brumbies and Andy Friend, your current coach at Colin? Uh, Dan sent me a message before uh, before the game, so did a lot of my teammates, and um, that was, uh, that was, you know, that was great to get. Me and, me and Dan were very close, uh, were good mates and, and everything while I was there. So to get a message from him, even though he's um, Wallaby coach at the moment, you know he genuinely was ecstatic for me and happy to be seeing my career take off. Um, so that was very special. And then to talk to Andy afterwards, Andy and his wife Kez, um, that was also very special. They're, they've been like another set of parents to me over here since um, moving away, and uh, you know I, I owe a lot to them as well. And just before I wrap up into the France game, did you get a word from Andy Friend's son? He, he's he been pretty special this journey, hasn't he? Yeah, everyone's loving Jackson at the moment, to be fair. everybody uh, Everybody's acting like he, he's playing the games out there for me as well. But, no, he, yeah, he, I got a couple, I got a messages from everyone. Um, I even got a video from the owner of the bar, that I, the, the ruck bar that I that I go to, King, um, wishing me luck, so... Um, yeah, every, everybody that sent me a message, I was just so thankful to, to get. And what about this weekend, Saturday, Stade de France, your first time playing there? It's going to be amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I can't wait. I can't wait to get out there. and uh, I think a lot of people probably regarding France as uh, the number one team in this Six Nations. So uh, we're really excited to get over there and um, you know just give everything we've got. Um, leave no stone unturned. So... Uh, and in such a big stadium with with such passionate fans, it's going to make it all all more worth it to, to put in the work this week and hopefully go over there and get a win. And you'll probably go up against Dummy and Pano, slightly different opponent to Lewis Rees Summit. How do you go about engaging what way he plays? He's obviously a cracking player, maybe a wee bit stronger than Lewis Rees Summit. Do you take every opponent individually, Mark, when you're looking to review them and analyse them? I guess you can't. You look over their games for sure, and over here it's. Um, well, you already know what Zamet and Pano kind of bring. Like they're unbelievable players. So um, yeah, you, you look over their game and see if they've got any tendencies they they like to do. But end of the day, um, the game kind of is dictated by how you know how I'm going to play, and that's all, all all that I can control. You know, I can't control if he's um, if he wants to kick it, or if he wants to step, anything like that. So. It's just knowing that maybe he likes to take a different way, um, maybe he likes to take the outside or maybe he steps back in. Um, but for me, yeah, it's just anything that I can control that I kind of look to do throughout the week. Yeah, you said there maybe he likes to go on the outside or maybe he likes to cut inside. And you defensively, you know, if you, whether you jam in and stir, why do you dictate that on the spot, Matt? We, we work very hard during the week um, about getting our, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like, I guess working well together. So I'm I'm working real hard with Gary, um, so we can both trust each other and trust each other to make reads. So all that kind of is built through the week that trust. Um, and then come game day, there might be times where um, things change and you, and you kind of just got to make a read. 
for sure, but definitely the work kind of comes throughout the week and just getting getting prepared together. And this game obviously goes a long way to deciding the championship. I know you're going to say it's only one game at a time, and game two, but it is such a big occasion, isn't it? Yeah, look, it, Six Nations, you know that you lose a game and it could all be over. So um, it is every every game is pretty much a final, which is, you know, it's exciting because um, it leaves no room for, ever, uh, for error and it just, I think that that's something that we've been thriving with lately. So, um, yeah, we, we're, we're keen to get over there and, and hopefully get a, the upset win. And since coming into the group, how big an influence has Johnny Sexton had on you to be yourself and express yourself? He's been great. He's um, he's such a cool head when it comes to, um, I don't know if he's like that all the time actually, but he's been a cool head with me. Uh, I've heard different stories, but no, he's he's um, been a bit the same. He's just been telling me to, as you said, play my game. And uh, when Johnny Sexton's given you a, a license to to do that, I guess you know that's that just kind of means the world and uh, makes my job just a whole lot easier knowing that that if I probably don't play the way I'm going to play, that that's when he's actually going to rip my head off. And going into France, how big a difference is the game plan against Wales and is against France? Um, you know, both both pretty similar in, in certain ways. Like the forward packs are, are big boys, um, big, strong, physical men. So um, we're definitely going to have to nut up up front uh, when it comes to that. And then... Same with Wales, like their their backline's just got such electric players in it everywhere. Um, so that just be- comes with staying connected with each other and um, making the the right reads in defence. Um, yeah. And finally, do you have to pinch yourself sometimes, Mac? You know, you said there, uh, quote there, you weren't a great electrician, now you're an inter- Irish international. What's going on in your head at the moment right now? I'm just enjoying the ride, mate, at the moment. Just, you know, um, that's that's all you can really do. You can just ride the highs and um, that's yeah just just enjoy every moment for what it is so there's no no point really thinking too far ahead I've I feel like that's when everything can go wrong so um, for the time being I'm just going to keep enjoying myself enjoying my rugby and uh, I think that will just keep the keep the ball rolling Mike it's been an absolute pleasure thanks so much for your time and all the best on Saturday